Okay, Merced G Major, second installment. So if you need to look back for the first video that covers the first section, the first solo and first full page, please do that. Otherwise, I'm going to pick up at bar 106 where the solo part re-enters. This has a key change, so pay attention because otherwise you're gonna have doozy notes. We have gone to the key of D minor, uh, after our little modulation to D major. So if you want to mark in things like that raised seventh note, the C sharp that's leading you to the D minor key, could be a good idea. I think we're mostly playing in first position throughout here. It's more about just dexterity. Schrodeck can also help us out when we're looking at these kinds of tapping semiquavers. We want really good articulation. Very similar ornaments to Shardas and to Fiocco Allegro or anything else by Mozart. So I'm just going to have a slow play from the 106 if you want to kind of rough it out in the background along with me or if you just want to listen I'll just spell it out for you. I lied there's a shift to second position. <laughs> Make sure you mark it above the E when you'll really be shifting. Don't mark it above the two it's too late to do that. And then we repeat the phrase. Bowing decision to make. So you either want down, up, up, or really it's just your call. I probably find it a little easier to bounce with the double up. I like the lighter, fluffier quality of that, but it's your call. We want piano dynamics. that little chromatic passage the C sharp make sure you hold the G sharp don't do anything fudgy with your third finger just leave it there B flat B natural C natural C sharp C sharp leading you to D oh what's that oh it's an arpeggio interesting So we've got a little show-off passage and then a little bit of impassioned pleading. Fine, yeah, good, okay. Hop into that position. And then make your bowing choice again. Sorry, I just put a G sharp in that didn't exist. Don't be fooled like I was. Now at 125, I suggest marking the half position so that you get... This is old. This is book four perpetual motion, even book two in your A and G. So don't be fooled by it. Move. More chromatic messing around in the next little phrase. More chromatics. So we're getting back to our more lyrical mode here that kind of floats over the top and isn't too meaty or too aggressive. Uh, maybe from 136 again.
Hang on, sorry. I started thinking about <laughs> the fingering I just played in 142 and I should have shifted to fourth position. Hopefully you saw that when I didn't. There's a first finger marked above the E and it's probably a great idea because then you've got four ready to articulate the A grace note. So at bar 142, you've got a dish up. Make sure you're playing one, two, one. Change both. counting like I failed to. I probably like the short slurs in 144. Mm. Oh, shift a second. And then we're going to pinpoint a fourth position to an A natural which should ring beautifully. So make sure you have the feeling of fourth with your elbow moved forwards. And that's kind of a little bit of uh, resetting your authority. You've had that quite fluffy spot, then a lyrical spot, and then a kind of dignified rounding it off ending feeling. Next page is just a recapitulation. So, if you know your theme and you're thinking about that relaxed right arm, you're fine. beautifully because you don't want to bludgeon that phrase to death with over enthusiasm. Then we get another solo, what a surprise! I, th I think it's okay to show off a little bit here. It's the solo and it's high and sparkly so you want your notes to be quite uh, assertive or project really well. that rhythm it's just busy busy stop stop prime example of falling over something easy right that's another chromatic descent so let's just take a minute take a sec to look at the shifting that's going on here um, we've got a fourth position at the end of the fourth line Ba -da, go to third, da 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 dum, back to first, da dum, back up to third, and then a little sneaky slide into fourth position. So worth writing your shifts into your music and probably drilling those shifts so that they're comfortable and you're not sliding past the note. Uh, that's probably a decent chunk to tackle on. That's taken you from the solo at 106 over to maybe the conclusion. I'll look you guys, it'll be fine to work to the end of the page, but I'm not gonna hold your hand through there. That's pretty simple stuff. Make sure you stop and write in your infrastructure app, by which I mean your shifts. Make sure you look at whether you're shifting on an open string or on between note to note, finger to finger, so that your shift is timed accurately and you don't leave it to the last minute and kind of cascade into the note. I feel like the start of book seven, <laughs> is actually fantastic for this. So dig that out and make sure that your trio section in that minuet is sparkly and secure and that you can play it with your eyes shut standing on one leg because that's the base, the, the building block for these concertos. So have fun with the second chunk of that. Make sure your bow texture is not taking itself too seriously. And remember these fingers Okay, make sure that you've got those little hollows in the back of your hand that you're really 
lifting up through yeah to create a declivity between your knuckle and your wrist get that to curve don't let it be like here and floppy pull your fingers up as high as you can the more flexibility you have the softer your bow hold can be and the more graceful your little up 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 staccato jolts will be enjoy